originally thinking of the topics I wanted to discuss on this podcast, I knew that one episode needed to be dedicated to the topic of divorce. I also knew that because I've never been divorced, I was in no place to speak on it. At first, I thought about having a family therapist or a marriage counselor on, but then I decided that I would love to talk about divorce, not just as an ending, but also as a possible new beginning. And when I decided that, I instantly knew who I wanted to have on as my guest. I just wasn't sure she would be willing. If you've ever watched HGTV, you have probably seen her light up your screen on one of her many design shows. Originally from Canada, but she has called Nashville home for many, many years. Courtney Wilson is known for a lot of things, music, real estate, furniture lines, and her own TV shows. But a few years ago, when her and her husband announced they were getting divorced, it seemed it was all anyone could talk about. As her friend, I have watched her navigate an extremely hard situation, always taking the high road and putting her kids first. Somehow, she has come out on the other side and has found happiness again with her fiance, Ryan. I wasn't sure if she was ready to talk about it publicly after staying silent for so long. She said she was ready, and I truly just feel so honored that she trusted me enough to break her silence here today. If you are going through a divorce, if you've been through a divorce, no matter how long ago, I hope you come away from listening today feeling heard, seen, and understood. I hope this conversation inspires you and gives you hope that you can do this. You can get through it and have better days as well. So without further ado, let's get to it. Here's my conversation with my friend, Courtney Wilson. Hello. Hi. Welcome to my podcast. (laughs) I can't even tell you how (laughs) honored I feel to be here and how beautiful this setup is. Well, thank you. I'm super honored to have you here. If people are listening, they also have to go watch this because it's so gorgeous. You've put so much work into this. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate that. Well, the topic today, uh, obviously, I adore you and you and I are friends and I would love to have you on for a multitude of reasons because you could probably talk about a multitude of expertise. Uh, But the topic that I really wanted to discuss with you today is the topic of divorce and moving on and how you get your groove back, basically. (sighs) How Courtney got a groove How back. How Courtney got her groove back, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, because as your friend, yeah. I have watched you mm-hmm. navigate this and 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 walk through this. And I have seen the grace that you have exuded publicly and on social media in many times when you didn't need to. Uh, mm-hmm. And probably maybe inside didn't feel like you wanted to, but you did anyways. And well, amen to that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I, as a friend feeling heard uh, is everything. Mm-hmm. And there is always an untold story. Um, always. Always. Well, I'm glad you're here to tell it respectfully. Yeah. yeah. And I did Some say of that. It. Yeah. <laughs> and I did say that to you before we started, because as your friend, I obviously know a lot of information. Um, but I said, this is not a conversation where yeah. we're here to bash anybody no. or speak badly of anybody yeah. uh, because this is a conversation about your story. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was another person in your story, obviously. Yeah. And now there's a new person in your story as well, which is very exciting. <laughs> yeah. There's I'm excited so for you. so much that has happened and gone down in, well, I think a two to three year period. And then also over the course of my life. Your life. So speaking of your life, uh, because we will get to all of that, but just for the people who don't know, because you have done a lot, how did you, tell us how you came to be in Nashville? Like, how did you get here? Why did you come here? When was that? Yeah, for sure. Well, let me first say that I haven't spoken about really any of this uh, as of yet. So, So, you know, though I don't have any nerves around it, so to speak, um, I also, you know, as a mom, I'm always protecting my kids and my heart and their hearts. So, you know, as we navigate through this first conversation, I want to say thank you because I wouldn't want to have it with anybody else except a friend who understands, you know, that it's sensitive. Um, But yes, I moved to Nashville. I'm Courtney Wilson. I moved to Nashville (laughs) when I was 18 years old. Um, with a dream dream and a prayer on $300. I don't and think I knew you were 18. I was wow. 18. Yep. So I decided I wanted to be an art. I knew I wanted to be a country music artist. That was my dream. And uh, I got here and I didn't know a soul. 
And my mom drove me down. And when we couldn't find a place to live that was affordable, she begged me to go back home with her and come back a few months later. And I said, no, I'm going to, I'm too scared. So if I leave, I'm never going to come back. Wow. I'm never going to want to experience this yeah. feeling of fear again. <laughs> so, But you only have when you're 18. I exactly, think. exactly. And so I stayed and I actually met Dave my very first week in Nashville. Okay, so mm-hmm. I think I thought you knew each other in Canada. No. I had been judged in a singing competition, um, and there was a, a professor there that worked at Fanshawe that had judged me and said, listen, if you ever go to Nashville, look up this guy. He's a songwriter. Mm-hmm. And he was friends and had gone to college with Dave. Gosh. So when I got to Nashville, I looked him up. His girlfriend, Margaret, who is now a very dear friend of mine, was like, come on over to our farm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I didn't, I was from Canada. Little did you know, yes. I, mean, I was like, <laughs> I'm going out to a farm and there are a bunch of musicians, which all turned out to be very successful musicians down the road, all crazy known songwriters. Right. But at the time we were all <laughs> nobodies, as they say, <laughs> and broke, right. eating beans. Sitting in a farm. Sitting in a farm. Mm-hmm. Playing, you know, guitar. Well, I, she, Margaret was painting on the side and was painting an entertainment lawyer's office and said, can I sing, can I play your demo tape? Because that's what we called it back then. Yeah. Um, for this guy, Derek, this this uh, lawyer. And I was like, sure, I guess. And the short story, long story short to that is that within a week, I was sitting in his office and I had a publishing deal, which I didn't even know what it was. <clears throat> Um, that which allowed me to get a, a visa. I, w- I had a, a production publishing deal as a songwriting as a deal, songwriting not, deal, yes, a deal to know. write songs, um, and a production deal with Reba McIntyre and her team. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I always say that was at the beginning of the end of my career <laughs> <laughs> because there were many pivots in that, but it was, it sounded the, amazing. It sounded amazing. And I ended up signing a deal with Disney. Wow. Yeah. A couple of months later. So it was a beautiful fairy tale. And living the dream. Yeah, living the dream. And with it, for four years, I had that deal. And at the very end of that deal, I wasn't super happy. And the record that I made when I was 19 wasn't who I was anymore, yeah. three and a half years later. And so I went, walked in, you know, proud and said, I want a release for my record deal. Like, who does that? Nobody. <laughs> right. I lined up another record deal with another company and I had a couple of shows to play. And one of them was between the World Trade Center, world, with the towers at the World Trade Center right before the towers went down. Mm. And I mean, five days before the towers went down. Our oh. buses sat in the middle. I played my last show with Rascal Flats, and um, went back to Nashville. That was your last show? That was my last show. Don't, I did not know that story. Yes. And uh, the towers went down and I remember everybody calling saying, where are you? Because I was filming the soap opera mm. One Life to Live as well. Wait, you were on One Life to Live? Yes. I do not know this about you. Yeah. Yeah. I was I on One Life not. to Live. So I, I did a series, like I think 12 episodes of One Life to Live that summer. And I was living, going back and wow. forth between Nashville You really were living the dream. I really was living the dream. My dream. dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, that next record um, company president called me about two, three hours after the towers went down. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, that this means I can't sign you. That's how that went down. And I said, yes, I do. I knew we knew the world had changed forever. Yeah. And even in my very young, you know, you 21, knew. 22 years, I knew. Wow. And, uh, So that was the beginning. That was really kind of the shift where then I became a struggling artist again for Mm -hmm. the second time in my life. Wow. And were you dating Dave at this point? Oh, I was dating Dave the first week in Nashville. So I, um, you know, we fell in love really fast and hard. And I was on my own for the first time. And I was, um, you know, independent for the first time in my Mm -hmm. life. And he was only here for a couple of weeks. And after meeting me, he was like, I'm changing my plans and I will get an apartment with you, which was a very hard sell for my family. So we told them he was gay. (laughs) You told them he was gay? Yeah, sort of, kind of. Oh my gosh. Anyway, (laughs) so we... (laughs) So they'd give their blessing? Yeah. So how old were you at this point? I turned 19 shortly after I moved here. But with Dave, I mean, when you like moved in with him? 19. Still still 19. Still 19. Still 19. Okay. Trust me, the mother of the 19 year old right yes. now, because that's what I have, uh-huh. um, cringes when I say that. Yeah. Well, but yes. It's your story. It's my story. And so we moved in together and, you know, that 
we were together 23 years. Wow. So how long after you met, what age did you get married? So I got married at 23. So we were together four years, almost to the day before we got married. Yeah. So it was a good courtship. You didn't super rush into it. We didn't super rush into it at all. No. And I I knew that I wanted kids and I knew that I wanted to be a young mom. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's because my mom was young and I had this image of what that looks like. Right. And I wanted to be a young grandmother. Like I had that in my head. You knew what you wanted. I knew what I well, wanted. Well, you're a definite go-getter. Like you are the person that if you decide you're doing something, the plan is in action. Yeah, I've changed a little bit. As you grow older, I think you gain perspective and wisdom and realize that not everything has to come now. Um and that there are other things that come when you wait, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's perspective and there's um, space is good mm-hmm. to deal with your issues. When you're 18 or 19, you don't really think you have issues. We do, by the way. You have a lot. <laughs> yes, you do. Or you think you can just handle everything. Just handle everything. Yeah. So I did that for a good part of my life. Just handle oh. everything. So how old were you when you had your first then? When you had your first son, how old were you? I was. Tw- I just turned 25. 25. <clears throat> and a couple of weeks after my 25th birthday, Jet was born and he changed my life forever. Oh my God, I could cry already. That <laughs> Please child. don't start. We just I know, started. I know, we, we just, just started. started. But I he's know. amazing. And, and, and then I had Sully and a couple Sully. of years later. And mm-hmm. I knew that I wanted to adopt. And so actually on my first date with Dave, I had said... That you want to adopt. Listen, I, I want to adopt yeah. a baby at some point in my life. So if this is a deal break, breaker for you, let me know now. And he was like... <laughs> Of course it's not. Sure, he just yeah. wanted to like, whatever. <laughs> Get laid, like, as sure. say. <laughs> yeah, do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Yes. So you did. You yeah. adopted sweet Lennox, who's yeah. not so little anymore. Yeah, she was two hours old. I breastfed that baby. And an interesting turn of events at the hospital put her on my chest from for skin to skin. I know. We could go in a lot uh, of directions I, today. Well, I, this will just be a short question because I'm just curious. Were you already breastfeeding? No. But it just I happened? had breastfed Jet okay. and Sally and it had been 21 months. Wasn't planning. Actually decided not to take hormones to breastfeed Okay. Her. That this would be my first opportunity at a hormone-free pregnancy. <laughs> Why would I do that yes. to myself? And so we were on, we were at the hospital and I put her on my chest. And as babies, as you know, yes, they will um, like, you know, work their work, way Wiggle up, their way. Wiggle their way instinctively. And I looked at Dave and I was like, do I let her do this? He goes, you know what? You're like a human pacifier in a way, right? right. Like this is just you guys connecting. And so I did. And after about 30 minutes, I felt her suck, like swallow. And I said, I think she just swallowed. And he was like, you're crazy. There's no way. 10 minutes later, I knew she did. I pulled her off and she had milk. And I had everybody. I have never heard that. Yep. Everybody was watching me breastfeed this baby. The lactation consultants, the pediatricians. Just shocked. They had seen it once before in an adoption situation where the adoptive mother had given birth before, right? It wouldn't have happened had I not given birth. But. Well, that's meant to be. Meant to be. And she loves the story because she feels like it, she was also meant to be. It shouldn't right. make her feel this way just this moment, yeah. but it does because I, I breastfed all three of my children. You did. Yes. Well, that's amazing. Well, I love that. Okay. So tell me about how you got from, because I think a lot of people do know you from the TV show. Yes. So how did you go from, you were an artist, then you were not an artist, sure. got married, you had kids, and the first TV show. When did the first TV show start. Okay. I had a, Dave and I had a show called Meet the Wilsons right. um, on CMT years ago. So when we were getting ready to adopt, actually let's go back before uh, Sally was born. So just after Jet, I was watching Nick and Jessica's show. Do you oh, remember yeah, that? Yes, I do. The t- t- uh, chicken of the sea. <laughs> yes. Yes. Chicken of the sea. Um, and was like, we could be the country version of this. So I the next night I Googled how to write a treatment for a TV show and I wrote a treatment and I started pitching it around and everybody was like, yeah, yeah, we really like you guys, but it's not really family oriented right now on TV. And it wasn't, it was definitely a trick my truck Mm kind of time. And they knew that we wanted to adopt a baby while we had Sully and now we're in the process of adopting a baby and they called us. And I had kept in touch. Like yeah. it wasn't like out of the blue, but they called us and said, you know what? Things are shifting and we'd love to have you come in. And I was like, well, actually we're about to adopt a baby. And I, when we had already had a failed adoption. And so I had like moments where I, I like to capture things much just, you know, probably Dave's and right, right. Now Ryan's On video, dismay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to remember the feeling. I'm a feelings mm-hmm. girl for better or worse. worse. And I remember feeling 
devastated over the first failed adoption. Mm. And when I got the call, I was inconsolable and I locked myself in the nursery. Woo! Yeah. And I just went right to camera to talk about my feelings. Which is interesting because you weren't doing that on camera I back then. I didn't even have a TV show. Mm-hmm. But I remember thinking, I want to remember this moment because mm-hmm. one day I'm going to be holding my baby. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to remember I this pain. Yeah. And how that pain can be turned into something beautiful mm-hmm. and feel. I knew back then that when I was holding my new baby, the baby I was supposed to have, it would all feel right. right. So I had that wisdom. But in the moment, I just felt pain. Mm-hmm. So... um yeah, we started filming Meet the Wilsons a week before Lennox was born. And it was just to document just the journey. Just to document our journey. No, no, we actually had a TV show at that point. CMT okay. was like, we're we're on board. We're going to do just this. Just about your life. Mm-hmm. We didn't have the, the ink signed on the contract because wow. they really wanted to get the whole story. And that was a beautiful time in my life mm. because I was so happy. I was so content. I had everything that I wanted. We had been struggling for a long time. We now had a TV show. I had my daughter. Were you doing design at the time? No. Not doing the design yet. Um, we were, I was doing a little bit of design. We were, we'd started flipping houses when okay. Jet was three months old because mm-hmm. we basically needed to make some money. Right. And I hired, I didn't, couldn't afford to hire a designer. So I was the designer. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason I fell into design. <laughs> I am. That's the only reason. Because you were on a budget. I was broke. But there's still some people who are broke and can't afford a designer. And Girl, still can't I think design. I picked out blue, blue countertops. So I'm not going to say I was good <laughs> well, at it. you've come a long way. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that, you know, that um, went two or three seasons and... We were you were, flipping houses on yes. the, we, the Wilsons? Okay. Uh, by the second season, it was called the Wilsons Flip Out. Gotcha. Which um, was just about the Wilsons. Okay. Yeah. And so then, you know, we, we, we stopped flipping house or we stopped um, that show and I was back to square one, you know, yeah. again, trying to figure things out and pivot in my life. And when f- make the Wilson or make when the, the Wilsons is canceled. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And how many <laughs> years are you now married at this point? Oh, well, uh, Lennox was probably at this point two. So I don't know. <laughs> Five years, yeah, six years, least. not a long time. Yeah. Six, seven years. Okay. Were you feeling at this point, anything in the marriage? No, you were still, everything was great. Mm-hmm. So yeah. then you do the next TV show. That's right. So, well, no, I decided I was going to be a real estate agent and that came out of mm. probably the only depression that I went through or my first of two depressions in my life where i didn't know what to do with mm. my life. Like, could I go back to school and be a nurse? Like I was going through everything because different things became important to me at that point. Right. I wanted to travel with the kids. I didn't mm. want to worry about where my next paycheck was coming right. from. But I also wanted to follow my dreams mm-hmm. and that's a tough thing. And you you're know? a dreamer. I'm a dreamer, but I'm also really practical. Mm-hmm. And those two things combined made it really difficult for me. And I, money was also important. And I, 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 whenever I say this, there, are, you know, half the audience can cringe and half of them can go, oh yeah, I get it. Yeah. And I mean that because I grew up thinking money was bad, right? Money represented evil in, in some ways. Why is that? Well, because, you know, we didn't grow up with a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So it was easy to say money doesn't fix your problems. Mm-hmm. Money doesn't, you know, change anything. Money doesn't make you happy, mm-hmm. which in a lot of ways is true. Mm-hmm. Money doesn't make you happy, but money gives you freedom. Yes. And I wanted that freedom. I wanted to not worry. Mm-hmm. And so I decided to be a realtor. And I remember Dave saying, no, don't do it. Like, don't, don't give up. I was like, no, I got to do it. And I cried every single day on the way to class. And I cried every single day in the car on the way home. No word of a lie, but I did it. And I was in my first year, probably two or three months into actually practicing and um, HGTV called and said, hey, are you interested in a show? Just out of the blue. Not quite out of the blue. Okay. <laughs> I, after Meet the Wilsons, I was, you know, scheming to get yes. another TV show. You but, knew some people. You know, I knew some people and I was putting it out there. Um, but I really didn't want the kids on the show. And that was mm. a big point of contention for HGTV. Because they wanted them on the show. They wanted them on the show. Okay. And... Uh, and finally, HTTV Canada came and said, hey, we'll do the show that you want without the kids on the show. Mm-hmm. Maybe just like a little snippet here yeah. and there, which didn't even happen until two or three seasons later. And then HGTV picked it up. Okay. So that was the making. That was 
uh, Masters of Flip. That was the Masters we of Flip. We were flipping houses, you know, anywhere for from eight to 14 at a time. Okay. And we did that for th- four seasons. Wow. Yeah. And, and it was happy? tough. Like loved it? Stressful. This was your thing? Probably way more stressful than we ever made it seem. On, on your television. marriage? Way more stressful on our marriage. Yes. Je- because of? I mean, the finances, um, it was going so fast we couldn't keep up. Like we were used to flipping one or two houses a year. And we went from that to like 10. I and- always wonder when I see this on a TV show, are you putting up the money for these houses or is Great the question. network? We were. You were always. Yeah, when you're flipping houses, it's, it's typically you. Now, I know HGTV US can sometimes kick in some dollars, but that okay. never happened with us because our show came out of Canada. So you're footing the bill. We are footing the bill. We are. So we were not only showing up to film every day, but the first season was chaos. It's probably also people's favorite season because mm-hmm. it's super real. Right. right? And they're like, like, oh, I can relate. This would be me and uh, my oh, husband yeah. flipping a house. That's right. And and I mean, there were conversations we were having and I was ripping mics off because I was like, oh my gosh, this is nuts. <sighs> like I'm I'm going from house to house fl- filming and then going home and working till one in the mm. morning trying to figure out what we can film the next day. There was no production helping us. There was. You were all no, on your own. we were all on our own. Now they were, by the second season, we... They were like, hey, instead of eight episodes, can you do 24? We were like, no. Right. Like, we'll die. Yeah. (laughs) So (laughs) we agreed to on 14. 14. And um, there were some, uh, without getting into all of it, and without even specifying who, there were some health issues. Yeah. While you're filming? Yeah. While we were filming. Which which I know you know about, but it's not my story to tell, really. It's just, there were some health things going on. Mm -hmm. And that's when it started. In the, mar- it, in the yeah, marriage too, the stress? In, and in the marriage. Yeah, I think they're, you know, whoo, this gets into it, doesn't it? So Dave and I are very different people. That's often mm-hmm. why it works. Um, But I was the consistent practical one and Dave, you know, brought the energy and the fun, mm-hmm. but was inconsistent right. in a lot of ways. And- you know, it was just a really tough time. But consistent Close to the end of, on camera. Consistent. Oh, super consistent on camera. I mean, yeah, I could set him up and he'll take the bait every right. time. He's brilliant. Yeah. Um, but, you know, often I would sit in my car and feel all that pressure to mm-hmm. do that. How long have you been married at this point, approximately? Well, so this is... Um, with Masters of Flip. Yeah, with Masters of Flip, you know... 10 years, 10 years, 12 years. I don't know. I mean, we, we were together 23 years. So when it started, we were probably married 10. I'm probably got the dates wrong. Somebody can figure it out, but okay. not a long time, like yeah. 12 years, I'd say. So, uh, and we did that for four more years or five more years, four seasons. But by the end of the fourth season, I knew this is, this is not going to work. So uh, in the order, show the show the is not going to work. Okay. Yeah. Great. I thank you for making <laughs> the me, show yeah. or the marriage. The show is not going to work. I was fighting for my marriage mm. at that point. I was fighting to make it easier on us. And so did I, you think at the time it's the show? No, if we could just fix no, the show. Cause it wasn't the show. Okay. Um, the show was tough to make. It was hard. Working together is hard. Mm-hmm. Um, I, there is a, I've never shared this, but mm. we, we're writing a, <laughs> God. do I know this story? <laughs> no, oh, gosh. we were writing a book called live happy, which is yes, so I, I ha- ironic. Yep. I think you gave me that book and books take a long time. Yes. I think that's what a lot of people don't, don't realize. realize. Yeah. They're like, wait, <laughs> they just put a book out. I'm like, but they yeah. didn't write it last week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We've been working on this for two and a half years. Yes. So, uh, so we were writing a book called live happy. I was definitely curating most of that. Mm. And um, I remember we were in a bookstore, a really big bookstore in Ontario, and there were thousands of people there. It was sold out Mm. or like whatever packed. And Dave and I had a pretty big argument on the way. And I remember that moment of us having to look at each other and say, okay, now we're going to be, now this is our professional life. Like Mm. we've got to get through this. We've got to go do this thing. Because remember, we're a real couple. For sure. People don't get that. Like they said, well, we didn't see that on the show. Like, really? (laughs) This wasn't reality TV in that way. We were flipping houses. 
And so we walk on stage, we do what we do best. Mm -hmm. We perform. Even though you've just had a fight on the way there. Even though we had a big fight on the way there. To your book signing of Live Happy. Yes. Yeah. And we we open it up to questions. (laughs) (laughs) And this woman says, I don't know how you do it. Like, I just, if I had to work with my husband, I would kill him. (laughs) Did you want to be like, actually? I said, oh my God, we're fighting right now. And you wouldn't even know it. And the crowd went wild thinking it was a joke. Uh And I was trying to make a joke, but it was a, it was an inside joke to Dave and I. Dave and was they probably just, like, what are you doing? Yeah, they just started yeah. laughing. And, and I and I said, what do you mean? We're fighting right now. Right, yes. Um, and some girl is going to listen to this and go, oh my God, I was the person that I... <laughs> you, yeah, she's probably like, wait, that was me. I blew your cover. It was me. Yeah, so, you know, life goes on. And it's kind of like a mom, right? You you wake up in the morning and you don't you've got a bunch of stuff on you. And it was not just your marriage. It was your income. It was your family's That's right. income. Yeah. Not to be confused with shortly after that, Dave gave me a big hug. We made it, we made up and it was fine. fine. Right? Like it, it's well, a normal marriage. Uh-huh. Right. I don't want to paint the picture that everything was bad. Right. Um, we were in love. Mm-hmm. And we were fighting for our family and our kids and our dreams. Right. Did you, ever, ever think you would be someone who got a divorce? Not in a million years. Like, did you actively think I will not be a person that gets a divorce? Correct. Yeah. 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 So you're doing your master's of flip. It's four years. It comes to an end. You're thankful. Yes. It came to an end on, with the understanding that we would do another show Okay, called Making It Home. Making It Home. And I was really pushing for that show because mm-hmm. it meant that we couldn't, we didn't have to pay for the houses. And we were flipping other people's houses. Oh, we were we were okay. moving to more okay. of a design okay. show. Yeah. Why this was important was because I kept thinking if the market changes, we could get stuck with, you know, 10 to 14 homes and mm. it's on us. The network's not going to come in and save us financially. Okay. Well, thank goodness. I mean, the market completely shifted. I mean, I'll give you an example. Nashville's market completely shifted meaning it was really strong. So we were having to commit to say 10 episodes a season before we bought anything. Which meant you needed to buy 10 houses. We needed to buy 10. What if we couldn't make the numbers work on 10? Meaning Mm. what if we couldn't find 10 houses where we could make a profit because things were going up so fast. And you were still committed by contract to film. That's right. That's a scary place to be in. Scary place. And I was not willing to be there anymore. Which was smart. Was Dave on board with that? Yeah, like he still still would have done Masters of Flip, Mm -hmm. but he understood that it was really causing us a lot of heartache. And so you switched into renovating other people's homes. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, which meant we also had a lot of help. We had a team, we changed production companies. They were amazing. I'm still working with them today. It's the Property Brothers. Okay. Oh yeah. And um, they provided a lot of support for us. Um, But as we were navigating our lives behind the scenes, which was really traumatic. There were some traumatic things happening. Um, I was, I was realizing that our marriage wasn't going to work if we both weren't going to show up. Quickly into the new show, you were feeling that? Quickly. Quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And do you start to have like a panic almost? Like what have I just committed us to? Well, yes. Um, Yes. And there, there were moments where, cause I'm a f- follow througher, as they mm-hmm. say, I am your dependable friend. Mm-hmm. I am the dependable one. And so there were days where I was like, Hey, we're, we have to be on set. And Dave would just say, I'm not going like, I'm, I'm not going. And it was almost like he knew that that was my trigger. We have to go. We have to speak in front of these audiences. Mm-hmm. We have to, we've, there's a family over here waiting for us to show up at the house. And it's not that he wasn't going to go, but it was that he knew that we knew each other's triggers and that was mine. And so were there times where you would go by yourself because he wouldn't go? No, he would almost always show up, but, but anything that he felt he could back out on, he was backing out on. So how do you show up in front of a camera or a speaking audience where you know it's falling apart, crumbling behind the scenes yeah. and you show up and everybody is expecting you to be who they perceive you to be. Right. I mean, how do you? Well, I was in fight or flight. Mm-hmm. So I don't even know 
if fully I was aware and I'm not sure that it was the right thing. Like I've done a lot of digging and a lot of work on myself, mm-hmm. um, which is why now I'm willing to talk about it because yeah. I don't want other people, whether they're on TV or, or they're not. Yeah, and which I love. And I'm I'm so happy that you have been so public about this. So yeah. I remember, and then I'll ask you, but my perspective was, uh, I don't know even know if you remember this. We were in my kitchen sitting with another friend of ours and she was talking about her divorce Mm -hmm. and you said, do you remember this? No. You said, so I have some news to share. Oh God. And I was like, oh, what's happening with you? And you said, Dave and I are getting a divorce. Yeah. And I went, wow. Yeah. It was unexpected um, for a lot of people. And- uh, it was unexpected for me. I mean, right up until the day that I filed, because it was me that filed. I didn't want to file. Mm-hmm. And essentially I had a conversation and said, can we, you know, go to therapy? Can mm-hmm. we do this? And he said, no. And, he, and I'm not going to go through the rest of that conversation because that was between us. But the he implied, go file. Right. Just like, what are you waiting for? So, and I know, again, like trying to be respectful and and there's certain things that you can't discuss, but relative to the conversation, is there anything you can or want to share about kind of how, like how, because I think that's from a public perspective Mm -hmm. in talking about that, Mm -hmm. because everyone just has a perception, right? Perception is reality. Their perception of you is their reality Mm -hmm. of you. And so they look at you as this golden couple that is amazing and does these TV shows together. So to them, it felt out of the blue, which it was not. Well, here's the thing. It wasn't, but I also want to tell people that like, I'm so happy they admired us Mm -hmm. and there were lots of things to admire. Mm -hmm. And there's still things to admire. There are still things to to give you the box. You know, and I think (laughs) I felt like people made me feel like a fraud. Yeah. And, and I, I wasn't a fraud. I was a mother and I was you, a wife. You weren't a fraud. And I've had this, we were just talking about this before we started this. I remember when you posted, um, you posted about the divorce Yeah, and you announced it. Which and, by the way, when, you know, I think people should know that that's timed. Sure. You know, it's there what you when you have a TV show, you, there are steps you have to take. Like from the network you mean yes. wanted you to do it at a certain time? Yeah, like we had decided they were so respectful by the way. Okay. I mean uh HTTV scripts our production company. You know, we told them, we gave them a heads up. It sh- it floored them. They had mm. no idea. Um We were filming. We were in the middle of filming and it was hard. I was on the phone with my therapist every day to set Mm -hmm. and we went separately. And on the way home, I would release. And that's how I got through Mm -hmm. it. Like this is how this, that was the only tool that I had because I had to go home and be strong for the kids. Mm -hmm. Um, But the announcement, you know, you, you sit there with a PR team and you say, Mm -hmm. I wrote it. So it wasn't, nobody else wrote, wrote it. I wrote it. I sent it to Dave. I said, are you okay with this? He said, yes. And then we agreed that on the final day of filming before our break at Christmas, we would post it. And I mean, we left set and it was timed, say like for two o'clock that day. Mm-hmm. We left set at 1.45 knowing we were going to pull over in our cars, post it at the same time. Mm. So you post it mm-hmm. and do you instantly start Getting messages on your phone? Do you instantly start reading comments? Thousands. Thousands. Um, I didn't go on social media right away. Right. Um, But I did a couple of days later, and that's when I thought, oh my God, my kids are going to see this. Mm. Um, I was accused of everything under the sun. Mm. And it's interesting how it was me, right? It had to have been. You you actually Mm -hmm. stuck up for me. I did stick up for you. I I was so angry. People suggested I was like sleeping with the landscaper. I had to, it had to have been me that had an affair, by the Mm -hmm. way. It had to have been. Which is crazy. So crazy Which is crazy. Did you, was there a part of you at the time that felt like he should have stuck up for you? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, because sure. I remember, and I knew the story. I knew what was happening, but I remember reading some of the comments and thinking he should be sticking up for her right now. Yeah, and I can't remember. I think I can't remember what I can't. Someone said, 
I, I actually do remember what it was in a vague way, but someone said something to the fact of, you know, I, I can't believe it's so easy to throw away a, a yeah. how long were you married? So 20, easy. So we were easy. together 23 years. 23 year marriage. Yeah. And I just remember thinking like, if you had been married, if you have ever been married for 23 yeah. years, there is nothing easy about it. I wasn't right? growing. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I, 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 we were in marriage counseling and, um, it, uh, you know, one of them's a pastor, actually they're both pastors, but they, they were really helping us for a few years. But at that point I was going and talking to them without Dave. Right. Again, you have to want to show up. And they had suggest, I called them that day on the way to set. And I said, you know, this was just said, and I, I think I'm going to have to file today. And they said, we were expecting this call. Oh. And she knew one of them, it was a couple. And she knew I had said to her a year prior, to, like previous to that, if I file, it's done. I'm going to exhaust every option because mm -hmm. I don't want this. Wow. But it was that morning that I knew that I couldn't live like that. It was that moment it, that I knew that I had to be happy, that be, my happiness was important to my children. I needed them to see me not just survive. Mm -hmm. They needed to see me thrive. Did you feel like at that time you were the only one fighting for the marriage? For sure. Yeah. But I, I know differently, mm -hmm. right? We all, I, through my work, I know this isn't what Dave wanted. Yeah. Um, and I think in some ways, Dave just kept like calling a bluff, right? Like, but I couldn't do that anymore. I couldn't, once you say divorce, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't probably for the That's first big word. 18 years of our marriage. Yeah. Once it's out there, it's out there and you can default to it. And it kept being defaulted to. Mm. And like in your conversations. In our conversations. Well, then file just just file for divorce if you're not happy. But did and you both kind of did you kind of think, well, we're just saying that it's not really gonna happen, or were you starting to feel like this is just inevitable? Well, you know, love is a powerful thing. And when we would come back to, you know, that that moment of being right. All right. All is right in the world. Mm -hmm. Everything's great. And we're getting ice cream with the kids and having dinner. It's really easy to just slough everything off mm -hmm. and not deal with it. Did you stay longer because of the kids? Oh my gosh. <laughs> do you think most women do? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When because, you, you know, we see the American dream. Mm -hmm. We've grown up with the American dream. And quite honestly, things have shifted and they've changed you know, our world yeah. is different than it was in the 50s and 60s and mm -hmm. 70s. And, you know, I think working moms who are especially are working and providing and doing all these things. And they're like, they come back to this moment of, I've got to be everything to everybody. Yeah. So I'll just suffer. So and I'll just suffer. Make everybody else happy. this. Yeah. Yeah. And when you, when you were like, this is it. I, I am at my end. This yeah. is the final thing. Did you still have that fear of, because I think as a mom, were you still like, am I ruining my kid's life? Or had you got to the point where you're like, I'll ruin it if I stay? The oh, kids. That's a Because it's such question. an example, right? You're, you're setting an example of for your boys of how to treat a wife, mm -hmm. for Lenny on how to be treated by a husband, how a healthy marriage should look. In the moment, I was, a, I was still dreaming about how we could work together mm. to make this great for our children, how they could see us both thriving and how that would benefit them. Mm. Uh, that was my dream in that moment. Now, let me just say that when I say in that moment, it took me a good year to get there. Um, it was also, we were, we were right on the heels of COVID. So okay. once COVID hit, it was a very, obviously a very difficult time in some ways made it easier because the kids weren't going to school for a bit. Mm -hmm. We, Dave moved very close to me okay. on our street. Which Were was, the kids surprised when you told them? Um, yes, they were, they were surprised. Yeah. Sad. Everything you expected. Yeah. But, but in that moment, there were some promises made to them that just, we couldn't um, come through on like, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, this is going to happen and don't worry. And from an amicable perspective, like, don't worry, yes, everything will be fine. Mom and dad will still be great friends. Yes. Your yes. life will hardly change. I would say a word of advice. Don't do that. Yeah. 
don't, don't make promise promises it. you don't, don't promise know. anything in that moment promise to do your best but at the time did you truly believe Dave and I have been great friends for all these years. I didn't we can make those promises. Work. So okay. what I said is we are going to do our very best. We don't know exactly what this looks like right now. <laughs> um, Dave is a lover, right? Like Dave is like the, like, everything's got to be fine in this moment for somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you feel like a million bucks right now. That is his gift yeah. in a lot of ways, right? You've met him. Mm -hmm. He will make you feel like he's your best friend mm -hmm. in that moment. And he believes it. Um, so he was wanted to heal them in that moment. So it came from a good place of like, of promises of, of promises, how it would be. Yes. Which it's going to be fine. We're all going to be great. It's, did you think though, this will be okay. We'll work it would through be better this. than it turned out. Okay. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of stuff that had to happen. And one of the things that had to happen is I thought we needed closure. It was recommended to us. Remember, every Therapy. situation is different. So yes. when I'm saying this, somebody else is going to go, well, hell no. That's not what I needed. <laughs> I needed to get the hell out of there. Yes. Everyone's situation is different. Is. And we, our lives were so intertwined. Business, music, love, marriage, kids. I mean, are you still filming at this point? You have filed we for divorce and you're still, still partners. partners and filming. So are you showing, were you on a break at that time? You said the season ended. And you filed. Did we you were get a break? on a hiatus for two months after Christmas. So two months after you filed, or you had to go back and start filming. Yes, to finish the season. And was it amicable at that point? Were you fine? I think we were in the middle of a divorce, so we still had as good we as were, it could have as been. As good as it could have been, we right. were still trying to decide, you know, divvy up assets and financials and kids and custody and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we were able to do that. It was a roller coaster, but we were able to do that. Um, but I wasn't able on the the day that we actually divorced, Dave wasn't there. And our, again, our marriage counselors had said, you know, I really think it's wise that we all sit in a room and just have closure. Mm -hmm. It's important to have closure, to appreciate all of these things, all of these beautiful things that you guys made together. Mm. Why do you think he wouldn't have wanted closure? I don't think he was ready to say goodbye. Yeah. I've and you I've never heard anyone else say that that was recommended to them or they did yeah. but it really is if this has been such a large part of your life yeah. how do you I mean how do you move on and prepare to get ready for the next chapter exactly if you haven't said goodbye to the last chapter well exactly and so I I started doing that on my own through therapy through therapy through so therapy. I started saying goodbye because it is a process mm -hmm. and it was eight, did it help it did help yes because I sometimes that was through music sometimes that was you know the kids would go to Dave's house and I would sit in the like it, I, I I'm painting a picture of like some really sappy Hollywood movie where right. I'm like Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know listening to the waiting to exhale soundtrack or something well, you, know? you did have but it's like I knew that I had to say goodbye I knew that I had to heal I knew that I had to mourn not having my children every day mm -hmm. Um, how long do you think, or even, I'm, I, I do know that you're there, but yeah. how long do you realistically think it took you to actually get there? Well, you know, uh, it took me about a year to mm -hmm. really, maybe a little less, like I had ups and downs and good days and bad, but it took me about a year post-divorce to really come to grips with this new life, but it was also during COVID. Which sucked for everybody. Which sucked for divorcing everyone. Divorcing or not divorcing. So I was isolated. Yeah. Um, I wasn't seeing friends like I would have. So it was you and the kids in one house. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And you're not working at this time because everything's shut Everything's down? Everything's shut down. No production, That's nothing. Right. So, okay. so we decide, okay, I'm, I'm moving on with the show, which had already been decided. Um, And... So you were just fine. You were not going to work together anymore. It was just too hard. Yeah. And we actually gave Dave the option to do the show. Like it, there was this moment where we thought, okay, we could, we could both work together. Mm -hmm. And then he said, yes. And then he said, no. And, and then, that's when you started working with Kenny and yes. everybody thought Kenny was Kenny the reason was for the lover. divorce. <laughs> I actually will admit Gay Kenny. that I remember texting you and I was like, this was after when you'd met Ryan, I was like, oh my gosh, is this him? And yeah. you started laughing and you were like, absolutely not. That no. is Kenny. That's no, Kenny, he's yeah. like my best friend. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody thought I was with Kenny, but honestly, yeah. I didn't, um, I went on a date about 18 months later. I was filming in Canada 
with Kenny for the first time and my girlfriends were like, you need to go on a date and figure this out. And so I did. I went on match.com and And changed my name to Amanda. You sure did. (laughs) And I I love that for you. And now look at you. Um, And literally, as you know, was going on a date. That's it. This was my, you know, is they rebound? Is that what they a like, rebound? A yeah. rebound, uh, just like a, a rebound. Well, and I do you that if you re- so while you were going through this, and I do, I was going to ask you. I read somewhere, and I thought it's probably true in, in a lot of circumstances, maybe not all, but that <laughs> when women are going through a divorce or people are going through a divorce, that the biggest issue for a woman is the emotional struggles and hurdles, yeah. but for a man, it's the ego. Ooh, and it's it's the not necessarily just what everybody else will think, but internally for him that he has somehow failed, uh, especially if it maybe wasn't his wholehearted decision mm-hmm. that he was unable to achieve keeping. Mm-hmm. Are you watching his wife. Sex Life as well? It on was Netflix? not Sex Life. <laughs> it was not. It was like a very intellectual article I okay. read on divorce somewhere <laughs> just because I happen to be reading it. No. Um, but I read that and I thought, I mean, do you think that had anything in yours at all? Mm. I don't know. That would be a question because he for was Dave. also it wasn't, a public figure. Yeah. It wasn't a question for me. It was like, I didn't, there was an ego that played into it for me. No, I never thought you had an no. ego. So the goals of how you envisioned your perfect divorce going yeah. versus, did you, did, did you realistically think it was going to happen in your own situation? Could you see it happening? Or did you think this is not going to go Well, this while we were going through the divorce, just those crazy ups and downs, mm-hmm. um, I realized this was going to be a whole lot harder than I thought, uh, that I was a dreamer. And that it probably wasn't going to look exactly like I thought. There were moments, again, there were moments, but there were crazy highs and crazy lows Mm -hmm. and the game kept changing. And I was trying to be consistent. So I was sort of like, this is how it can go. And we can, we have to be consistent for the kids. That was the best advice that I ever got from other moms Mm -hmm. and other parents who have been through divorce. Be consistent. Um, there are already crazy highs and lows for them. So be consistent in your parenting and your love. Right. How do you, I mean, I know you're like, okay, well, you just do it. But truthfully in the real world, yeah. when you're going through a divorce where there's still so much drama yeah. outside stuff happening, yeah. how are you able to, with your kids, Still keep your head high, not badmouth the other parent. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, your kids were older enough that they had, they weren't toddlers. So they were aware of mm-hmm. things that were happening or being said. Mm-hmm. But how are you realistically able as a mother to just kind of take the higher road <sighs> and not maybe say what you want to say in response to something that has been said to them it's or online? The same, along the same lines of responses to Dave and I in general, right? Like mm-hmm. I can be reactive. Like he'll say something and I can be reactive. Mm-hmm. Well, that was probably, uh, you know, at a deficit in our marriage. Well, nothing changes in divorce, yeah. right? You got, you got divorced because of those things. So I had to change my behaviors with him. Mm-hmm. So when it came to the kids, we both, I think both Dave and I both did tried to do or tried to do the best job that we could in not bad mouthing each other. Things got pretty strenuous. I'm not going to lie at some point. And, um, I had to be willing to talk about their feelings without expressing. (laughs) It was an interesting situation with each of my kids was different, by the way. I had to be able to talk about my feelings with them or say, be an open, you know, stage for them to express themselves and also not validate in some ways at the time. Right. What they were saying. What they were saying. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they had things that they had to say, especially my daughter, right? Who at the time was going back and forth. She lives full time. She lives full time with you. At the time, time. what were they doing? They were going back and forth. It was about 60, 40. Okay. At the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, there were some concerns, right? And when they bring up a concern, you're concerned. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh, I don't even know how to talk around this, but 
it's very difficult to talk about. Well, and I'll ask you and you can say what you want and you can decide. We can edit this out after. It's up to you. But I do think it's important, again, which you and I have talked about, for other women who could be finding themselves in this situation or maybe are worried about getting a divorce because they think this would be me. This is exactly Mm -hmm. what would happen. And I can't be bothered to go through this. It would just be a nightmare. It won't end well. But when you have kids involved Mm -hmm. and the divorce is happening and you know what your expectations are as a parent and Mm -hmm. you know what you value and how Mm -hmm. you want your kids to be. And um, what do you... What do you do when the other parent is not on board or that you're not, you don't have control over anybody else. And when you realize that you literally can't control another person, Mm -hmm. especially the Mm -hmm. co-parent, you can only change your own behaviors. So I, in my consistency, though, it was not always the most popular opinion amongst my kids. Right. Right. So we had different ways of parenting. I was definitely the stricter parent. I was definitely leading out of courage. Mm-hmm. Um, for my kids, whether that meant getting them help or putting down rules, it would have been easy for me to say, sure, you know, your girlfriend can sleep over, you're blah, 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 blah. you can do whatever you want, right? Yeah. I'd love to be the parent that- And overcompensate. And overcompensate, out of guilt. yeah. Mm-hmm. I did not do that. I did not cave. I remember that. And I didn't do that because my job was to be a parent. Mm-hmm. That's what I signed up for when mm-hmm. I had kids. Even if it was hard, I lost family members through it. I lost, I lost the support of a lot of people because um, they thought you should have either never left or not left, but got divorced. Or I don't because... think they realized how bad it was. It all, yeah. it all came out in the wash, and 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 my children love their dad, um, and they also love me, and they see as they get older, people would say to me when we were going through this, they will see, they Mm -hmm. will understand. At some point they will get Mm -hmm. it, right? They will understand that you made these decisions for them out of love and they do. I was going to say, I think like, <laughs> when they're, the o- story, but like also they're, like when they're older, are they not, I would say they're as, older, oh they're my older, gosh. they're there. Yeah. You know, a 16, from 16 to 19 is a very big mm-hmm. gap. Mm-hmm. Also, all three of my kids are really different, right? So one of them is super feisty and one of them super sensitive. You know, Lennox, I always call her my wild card. I never yeah. know what I'm going to get, but she's just ridiculously close so to me and trust me. So did they all require kind of different parenting yes. styles through the divorce? You get it? As a, yeah. like, I don't we're supposed to change our, like I'm, I can be consistent in my parenting, but address them differently. Mm. Some of them needed a little bit more tough love mm-hmm. than others. Yeah. Um, some of them needed to be coddled in moments. Uh, like, you know, one of my kids, you yell at him and he's like, oh my God. Right. Um, and one doesn't listen unless you're really kind of bold about it. Do you think a lot of people do compensate for what is probably guilt by just allowing them to do whatever they want after, or not- uh, For sure. Just pleasing them. Yeah, for sure. I think it's really easy in a divorce to give, whether it's a little bit more candy Mm -hmm. or, you know, a late bedtime because I don't get to see you that often or don't. Do you get to the mom who's in this situation? Do you, as a mom, have rights and legal rights to make sure your kids are parented how you want them to be parented? Well, both parents have those rights. True. Um, And, you know, I think uh, kudos to like a lot of single dads out there raising, you know, like Mm -hmm. I I don't think this is just about moms. I think generally speaking, moms get the credit, but I have watched a lot of cases through the years and sometimes it's the dad, Mm -hmm. right? Who's willing to, to be more consistent, but consistency is key. Um. And it is what got me through a very hard time. And you have definitely been a consistent. That's right, mother. I have been consistent. Yeah. So Again, when you're we going, had fun. I don't want to like. No, paint this you're not. Yes, of like, you do oh, have God, a lot I'm of hard fun. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> they just sit at home, do homework, yeah, no, behind no, their no, room, no. eating vegetables. We've had you are so very much fun. fun. I'm the parent that travels with yes, them. I mean, I'm are. the only parent that travels mm-hmm. with them. I'm the you know, like I do lots of fun things with them. But like, <laughs> you're a very mean mom. Yeah, but you know, yeah, you have. You also have a job, and your job is to do your homework, and your job is to go to school. And I think they appreciate the security of knowing that. Yeah. My jet recently said, um, 
we were discussing some things with my fiance, which we haven't gotten we to. We're getting Ryan, there, I promise. Um, with his cousins one day, we were at dinner and one of them started laughing about some of the hard calls that I've mm. made. And Jet turned and said, my mom's always holding pocket aces. Oh, I love that. <laughs> she said, she, she doesn't bluff. My mom's always holding yes. pocket aces. Well, yeah. And so that. for him to be in that place yeah. now um, to understand how that has benefited him is really cool. Well, you talk a lot about therapy. Yeah. Um, when you are going through all of the divorce stuff yeah. and publicly and people are saying all this stuff and writing all this stuff and you're yeah. like, this is not true. I've never even spoken about it. Yeah. I'm, I'm quoted of saying things that I didn't say. Uh, and it would have been really easy for you to, you know, whether it's shut things down or say that's actually not what happened or no, this wasn't actually my fault. This was what happened. Who is your support system behind? And I'm talking back like when the divorce was happening. Like, my girlfriends. Your girlfriends. Um, my girlfriends will actually be walking me down the aisle. Oh. Yeah, they are my support system. They are the reason that I'm still living and breathing and um, healthy. Yeah. Did you have friends that were mutual friends, like as a couple friends that every single one of my girlfriends, whether it was just them or them and their husbands were all mutual friends okay. um, with Dave. Um, but there were a lot of hard things. <clears throat> and at some point, some people had to take sides mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and, and everybody had to choose. I think that's an also, also a very tough thing when you don't have a really great relationship post-divorce. Um, but yes, my girlfriends will be the ones that will walk me down the aisle. They are the ones that picked me up when I was as low as I could be. And I couldn't show that to the kids. Yeah. Like I was like, I can't do this because in those moments, like, why are you crying? Mom? Right. And you're and like, then I it comes can't back really to that conversation you. Yeah. that you're like, you can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I would lock myself in my car or my bedroom or at night. And I just say, how do I do this? Yeah. And they'd remind me that I was strong and I was capable. And I think the other thing that I always, I always think about, you know, people say when you were just talking about therapy, I was going to therapy, but you get to decide, right? you can run in place for a long time. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of divorcees in therapy who are running in place. Just going to the therapy appointment saying the same yes. thing every time. Yes, yeah. You're, they're moving. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but you've got to move and forward. propel yourself forward. I love that expression, running in place, because there are a lot of people, I think they do think they're like, no, I'm doing the work. I'm do One day I'm going to get there. Yeah. If I'm talking about the same problems, every time. I'm not growing. Yeah. Now, sure, I kept having a different problem. Right. But- I, you have, different problems means you're growing. Did anyone give you advice? Though there was like, this was the best advice I got while I was going yeah, through divorce. Yeah, don't borrow trouble. Don't what? Don't borrow trouble. Um, my friend, Annie B's mom always says it. And she kept reminding me, don't borrow trouble because it got to a point where I would say, oh my God, this is going to happen. What if, oh my gosh, what if mm. this happens? Because I was almost in trauma and she'd say, don't borrow trouble. It's not here, so don't mm. borrow it. Live in the moment. Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen. It might actually be fine. I love that. All right. So, I well, you're going to correct me on the date because I don't have a time concept. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. Ryan's in the sound booth I right know now. He is. He's listening I to you. I know he is. Um, <laughs> he just plucked his ears. <laughs> so, one thing I do remember, yeah. you had not met Ryan, mm. and we were at lunch. Oh, gosh. And with another friend. Oh, no. And you... She was talking about dating or something. And I I think she asked you if you had been on a date. And you were no. kind of like, oh my gosh, no. Yeah. And that and, was a year later. Uh-huh. Okay. And she said something about the fact that she would, you know, like to get married again. And you said, I wouldn't. And I said, what? And you were like, no, I, I just don't think I believe in marriage anymore. <laughs> and I was like, like, it's just like a, a stab to my heart. And I was like, Courtney, what? Like, I know you will. And you were like, no, no. And I, I do remember thinking afterwards, like how hurt or burned do you have to be by an experience to yeah. just write it off forever right. and just kind of take that wide paintbrush and just be boom. <laughs> my heart was open to love again, but, um, the whole legalities 
of marriage scared me mm. um, because I was coming out of that. And I never thought that I could be divorced. Never in a million years. You would never be that person. Nope. I would never be that person. So if I could believe that then, yeah, it could happen again. Um, but I was open to love. My heart wasn't closed to love. It was just the actual sanctity of marriage. <laughs> Did you always know you would meet someone else? Or were you like, I think some people come to divorce and think, I don't really care if I ever meet anybody else. I'm happy to be alone. I'm good to be alone. I don't need to. And some people are like, no, I, I'm a person that needs a companion. I, I Well, I, I'm a feeler mm-hmm. and I, I knew that I would want to um, be in a relationship at some point, but I couldn't figure out how that would happen. Isn't that funny? Because I was Well, you'd been out mom, of the dating scene too of, for so long. I had long. never dated. I, well, yeah, you just kind of got set up. Yeah, like I, was I, I met Dave when I was 18. Oh my gosh. So other than like high school dating, mm-hmm. I had never dated. Like, oh. let's put it this way. I asked Ryan in on our first date to to come in and do a puzzle. <laughs> like he looked okay, at me, he was like, so who the hell are you? Do you is this that your first code? Date, I don't think it was, because <laughs> here's the deal. You were at lunch talking about taking yeah. Lennox to Canada yes. because you were filming something. That's right. At the same lunch where you're like, man, no, I'm not getting married again. And I was like, yes. oh, this is okay. And you went to Canada for like, what, six weeks? You were gone during like, COVID. It was a few months. It was three months. Yeah. yeah. And you called me. And I left me. the boys back because yes. Canada was closed down. Correct. And you just took Lenny. Yeah. And their school was back. That's right. Yes. And you took Lennox and you were like, I'm going to Canada for six weeks. And you called me <laughs> from Canada, which I remember when I saw your number, I thought this is odd because I was in Canada. Yeah. And like, why are you, why wouldn't you have just texted me? And you called me and you were talking to me about this and that, and just like nothing of that much importance. And <laughs> you said, I was like, okay, guys, she just called to say hi. And then you were like, so... I met someone and I would think I almost drove off the road. I was like, <laughs> wait, I just saw you and you were never going to get married again. Not that you were saying I met someone I'm getting married. Well, trust but... me. I mean, on our first, I, I went on Match.com. True story. What and ma- I... Okay. So what, what makes, what made you go on Match.com? Yeah. So I, it was definitely closed off in Toronto and my, <laughs> I don't want to out her, but it well, was just one of the producers her. of the show. Okay, We had gone on a hike and I was like, where do you go? Because my girlfriends are basically saying, this is your opportunity. You to don't meet have, someone. Yeah, you okay. don't have Lennox this week because it was spring break and she was with a family member and she was like, just go online. Like that's how people meet right. people. And so I said, well, which one? Like which dating site? Yeah. And so she was like, well, in Toronto, maybe match.com, I guess. I don't know. Like she's married. Yeah. And so she said, I guess. So I did it, but I, my profile, I, I decided to ch- use my picture, not a very glamorous picture, by the way, okay. with um, the name Amanda. Cause I just gotten off the phone with my, my friend, Amanda. Mm. So I go and d- I put it online. I pay for the extra like protection and all <laughs> that jazz security. <laughs> I get off, I do a yoga, like an online yoga thing. I come back and I go to Instagram and I have a bunch of messages saying, oh my gosh, somebody by the name Amanda is using your picture on, I- on oh, uh, like Match.com. People thought you were being like conned or like, like a fake the account. The horror, <laughs> the imposters. <laughs> oh my gosh, how dare they? I went on and deleted my whole profile. Oh, you profile. did? Yeah. Okay, so then, also, do you remember what you wrote? wrote in your profile? Like, don't you have to write it like yes. a, something about yourself? I was very vague. Um, I said that I had kids. I don't know if I disclosed how many. Uh, I was like, I'm going I like through hiking. a horrendous divorce. Yeah, exactly. I sound amazing. I was not looking for anything. <laughs> Let's be real. Right. You I just was, wanted to meet someone. I was looking to propel myself forward. There yeah. was a step I had to take mm. for myself. That was the step. So says my girlfriends. Like, so, an ex- like a little experiment. An experiment. Like a love we'll is blind it. kind And of. also, I have always said that when I am scared, when I am in a moment and I kind of am a little uneasy and mm-hmm. anxious, that's when the good stuff happens, right? Yeah. That means that I'm about to do something. Being uncomfortable is good for me. Because you move. Because I You make move. a change. Yeah. In the moment, I have to recognize it. Like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in that place right mm. now where I'm about to make a few changes and I'm like, oh gosh, it makes me yeah. breathe a little heavy, but- But it's the, exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. 
So he, I went on and there were two different guys of the 200 that had messaged that I Dang, thought, well, girl, no, you got like some popular you say hits that, on that. When you're first, when, <laughs> it's like fresh meat. You get like put to the like, oh, top so, okay. of the- So when, oh, when you were like first, you're like the new post. I'm the new, new post. You're new post I'm on new Instagram, <laughs> verified everything. Yes. And Amanda so, coming in hot. The first guy I messaged, he had messaged me and he was kind of throwing out the like, I have a private plane right. and I do this. I was like, eh, that's not- <laughs> interesting to me at all. Um, and then Ryan had messaged me. So I messaged him back. He what did had really he say? kind eyes. What did he say in his message? He was like, Hey, hey how are you? Yeah. Hey, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> how hey. are you? Um, I can't remember. It was very like, Hey, if you know, you want to chat sometime, right. whatever. So I said, would you like to FaceTime? Which you that don't do. That was very bold. Well, I am a woman on a mission. Yeah. Is it because you wanted to make sure he looked like his profile photo? Yeah, because there were only, first of all, I know now why they have five slots for photos. I oh. only had one. And so oh, okay. I actually had a lot of people message me, can you send me more photos? Oh and I was like, gosh. no. But then when I was going through, you'd see the first one and the second one, you'd be like, this isn't even the same person. Oh, okay. So Ryan looked kind of, young. He also looked like a guy who didn't know how to take up selfie. Right. So I was like, oh, we'll just, you're like, oh, cute thing. But his eyes looked trustworthy mm. and kind. Mm -hmm. And of all the things that I, that were important to me in this moment, it was that. So he's like, uh, I guess we can FaceTime. So we FaceTimed and I was like, Hey, um, by the way, are you trustworthy? Like, do you consider yourself trustworthy? He's like, uh, that's a weird question, but yes, I think my friends would consider that me. I'm trustworthy. I said, great. Awesome. Let's FaceTime. My name's not Amanda. <laughs> True story. Okay. So he and says- It's funny that that wasn't a red flag for him. Yeah. Like he wasn't like, uh, okay, you're a fake. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. He was like, sure. Yeah. So he says, everything's closed. Like all right. the restaurants oh, yeah, you can go anywhere. in Canada. And he's like, listen, I have this house at the bottom of a ski mountain that he had just built. He says this. Yes. And it's a four bedroom. And he was like, I know that this is super forward, but there's four bedrooms <laughs> and you could come up because it's two hours away from Toronto. And- stay in one of the bedrooms. I love to cook. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so sweet. But I'm not a freaking moron. I was just going to say, at this point, <laughs> how do you not know he's a serial killer? Yeah, exactly. So I was like, no, I'm not coming to your house. Yes. But if you find yourself in Toronto tomorrow, maybe we can go on a hike. So he was like, oh, I'll find myself in Toronto It's a two hour drive yes. later. Yes. So he comes and the mayor decides to open up restaurants that day for like one <gasps> weekend only. Wow. So we go to Jack Astor's. Mm, you know the place. I do know it. We sit on a patio. Yeah. It's very early. He, we have a great time. I cry at least two or three times on, <laughs> on this the date. first date. Yes. <laughs> Another red flag. The second. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's still not deterred. Telling my story. You he told was, the whole story. Yes. I. I mean. I just. Well, yeah. you were like, look, this is me. So this is me. I'm not wasting my time. Yeah. Like I. I'm sorry. Um. He comes home and he goes to drop me off and I said, "Would you like to come in for some wine and do a puzzle with me?" <laughs> And he said, was puzzle code, code. for something? <laughs> okay, I'm just curious. No, I, okay, yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to tell. He did come in. By the way, I and did stand the puzzle? behind the puzzle. The puzzle is a great way to get to know somebody. <laughs> Wait, First of all. Did you, ev did you even own a puzzle is my yes. first question. Did you do a puzzle? Yes. The whole thing? No. Okay. <laughs> and the story ends there, <laughs> girlfriend. You began a puzzle. Okay. Yes, we did part of a puzzle. Yeah. And at some point that night, I turned to him and said, um, cause there was something mm. I could feel something. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> Maybe it was desperation. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why? Whatever it was. I said, Hey, don't fall in love with me. That would be very dangerous for you. Wow. Those were my exact words. And, and what did he say? Too late. On the first date? On the first date. It was the puzzle. It was definitely the donut definitely. puzzle. Wow. <laughs> and that, okay. So when he says that though, are you like, this is it? Or are you like, mm, maybe he's just saying that I don't know anything about this guy? Because you truly didn't. There's other than no what he said. part of me in that moment that thought I'm going to marry this guy. No. And it was only because he's in Canada. Mm -hmm. I'm in Nashville. <clears throat> I have three kids. He is 40 and a bachelor with no children, never been married. I'm not going to get married. It's like the unicorn visa. on match. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, seriously. Right? I was like, I'm not going to get married for a visa. I'm not, I don't want to complicate my life. Mm -hmm. um, and so we decided I had to go back to Canada and then come back 
to to sh- to wrap the season up for two weeks. But are which you meant- talking during this time? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I had to wrap the season up, and there was a quarantine for t- of two weeks in Canada. Mm-hmm. So I had to quarantine somewhere, and he said quarantine with me, and I said no. You said no, and he was like, I I feel like you should reconsider this <laughs> because this <laughs> I is, have four bedrooms. I have four bedrooms. The bottom of the yeah, mountain. Exactly. Now we had been we had been dating. Okay, for, so you were in a oh, relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you we, were, we had been dating. Him your boyfriend. I had Lennox. Lennox had not met him. There was no the kids right. did not know. Mm-hmm. I mean, at one point on a Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning, he called me and I said, yeah, Lenny and I are just, you know, I don't know, doing a puzzle, right. doing homework. And I was really sick. I was getting sick. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh. And so that afternoon he texted me and said, there's something on your porch. And I went out and he had made me homemade chicken noodle soup Dang and given me like vitamin, vitamins, driven two hours, bought, the ch- I, I'm actually a vegetarian, but I'll, I'll eat You'll chicken still, broth. Yeah. <laughs> he like made the chicken broth from scratch drove two hours, dropped it off on the porch and went away because he knew there's no way that I would leave Lennox. Or... Yes. Oh, so, because she hadn't met him yet. She hadn't met him. And Lennox is like, where did this come from? I was like, Uber. Yeah. <laughs> Do I dash myself some soup? So there were definitely some moments in there where I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to fall in love with you. This guy's going to make me fall was in love with Was part of you holding back because you were worried about the kids and what they would think? Yes. Or how it would work? I, I, I don't. I wasn't going to be that mom that wasn't going to push forward on my own life because mm-hmm. of my children. I don't think that's the right message to them. So they how long after me. the divorce, <laughs> which is true, how long after the divorce were you dating Ryan, would you say? Uh, 18 months. Okay. Year and a half. So, um, was Dave dating anyone that you knew of at that time? Um, you don't have to say who <laughs> or you can, it's up to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes. And that he was, mm-hmm. and did the kids know? Um, I don't know if they knew at that point, mm. but um, you knew. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't, it's interesting because I didn't, there were a lot of things that came out, but this person was unf- somebody that had worked for me. Yeah. So I, I um, was hearing all the rumors uh, while I was in Canada. I asked him, he denied it. Um, but yes. Anyway, let's, okay. st- let's pause on that. Okay. So, um, so I came back. Um, I did believe Dave at that moment that, okay, they're just friends or yeah. something. So we came back. Uh, I went back to, to quarantine and fell in love. Mm-hmm. That was, those were the two weeks. So did you love. stay with him? I stayed with him. You stayed with him. I decided if I'm going to know. Did you stay in one of the other three bedrooms? Off <laughs> limits and no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. I'm proud of you. That was a good job. Okay, so two weeks of quarantine and you yes, knew. I knew. I knew that there was something. And then are you kind of like, oh shit, now what do we oh, do? Yeah, oh, definitely. I had an oh shit yeah. moment. So I went back home after, so I filmed for two weeks, or I quarantined for two weeks, then I was filming for two weeks. Mm. This was the only time I was without my kids mm. because now that we were wrapping the season and it was very complicated because of COVID. In fact, I haven't filmed back in Canada since yeah. because of that. But we, um, he, he drove in every day, two hours um, after work. And hung out with me. We went to dinner. The next morning, he would go home. So, like, he, we were committed to figuring out if this was a thing. Mm. And by the end of that month, I knew. So, I went home, and I was home for about 20 minutes. I sat with the kids, and I said, I have something to tell you. Mm. I met somebody. And I don't know what it is. You told them all at the same time? All at the same mm-hmm. time in the kid, in the boys' bedroom. And I said, I don't know what this is yet. Mm. Um, but he's going to come to Nashville in about two weeks for two weeks. Now, this is the time that you have during the summer break with your dad. Mm-hmm. I've purposefully done this at that time and to make you guys in control, you're in control of whether you need it. I'm or not, not forcing it. On I'm you. not forcing it on you. And what was their initial There reaction? was a pause, an awkward pause. <laughs> and Jet said, I want to meet him. And Sally said, I think I do too. <laughs> and Lenny just smiled ear to ear. Oh. Um, and we knew he was coming in two weeks. They asked me a few questions, but not a ton. And a few days later, we were sitting at dinner. I was made dinner for the kids. Ryan's listening to this right now and going, you made dinner? Because I have <laughs> not cooked put a, we since I met a, him. We should have put a mic on Ryan <laughs> know, so we can get the true facts. <laughs> and I said... Um, uh, hey, let's call, let's FaceTime Ryan right now. Cause I knew he was going to be more nervous than them. Yes. And we had to catch him off guard. Yeah. It was, the kids were going to so be in he control just thought, Yeah, that you were FaceTiming him. Yes. And so the boys, I had made wings that night okay. for them. Obviously I don't need that, but 
they had their shirts off and it was a very funny moment where the yeah. boys took their shirts off at the dinner table. Okay. And I was like, are you kidding me? They're like, mom, it's wings. But it was just us. It was cute. Yeah. So we call Ryan. We decided to, fa- they're like, yeah, let's FaceTime him. So we FaceTime him. And my heart was kind of pumping out of my mm-hmm. chest. And Ryan goes, hey, babe. <gasps> and he opens it and his shirt's off and he's eating. <laughs> Wait. Uh, he, not wings, but he was eating. Oh, and he Ryan went, I said, was hey. eating. Oh, yes, I gosh. said, hey, baby, do you want to meet the kids? And he goes, oh my God, um, my shirt's off. And I, and I, tr- as I'm turning the camera, Jack goes about that. And they were, and they all, were all shirtless. Laughing, oh, and they good. were all shirtless. And it was just a really sweet Which moment. is probably way better than if you had like set up a meeting. Exactly. Yeah, it just happened. Um, here's what I will say about their relationship. Ryan, the one easy thing mm. about the last couple of years has been their relationship with Ryan. Mm. Did they all, so- Ryan, being someone who is not married. Yeah. He's never been married. Yeah. He has never had his own children. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, he, I mean, there's like getting thrown into like the pack. And then, I mean, he got thrown into the wolves. I mean. Understatement. Correct. With everything. Yes. With, with the divorce that was going on. Yeah. He all of a sudden is in love with this woman. She has three children. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had a lot, I hate the word baggage, but you had oh, a lot wow. of stuff. I said at one point to my girlfriends about dating, I was like, I mean, you know, everybody just like has so much baggage. And one of them turned to me and said, you are the baggage. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. Yeah. you're. Right. But did he ever, did you ever get that feeling from him that he was like, I'm overwhelmed. This is more than I thought. Well, there, there were a few moments that we both felt that mm-hmm. way. Um, how do you navigate if someone else is in that same situation thinking, I have too much. I am not, because I think there would be a lot of women and you maybe had this thought too of, I just come with too much. Like no one else is going to want to take all this on. It was a lot. Um, but I don't, like I couldn't operate out of fear mm. and neither could he. If we yeah. were going to do this, we were either going to be there for each other or we weren't. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, I think there were moments where I was going through trauma. We were both going through trauma and I was able to recover a lot more quickly yeah. than he was because he had not been through this. But mm-hmm. also as we experienced the last couple of years together, I think he would say life is fuller when you are experiencing a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that you have to experience trauma but through that was so much growth and so many positive things as well. Yeah. That, and if you can make it through that. Yeah. I don't want to go through life yeah. on a flat road. You know, what do you think you're doing? Do you think you're doing anything different in this? Like, have you consciously said or thought you're doing things differently this time with Ryan? Um, I'm still who I am as a person, but I know my triggers. I'm able to communicate them. Mm. Um, I make a a conscious effort for us to have time, which he also reminds me, like Mm -hmm. he'll he'll still say, hey baby, you wanna go on a date on Thursday? Like Mm -hmm. we're living together, right? Right. Um, And we're raising kids together at this point, you know, like the two minors are with us. And last night he, he said, he sent a text to the family and said, Taco Tuesday and like sent all these Mm -hmm. funny memes, tacos are ready, everybody come down. And I realize in those moments that he's also making that effort yeah. for us to be, to, to enjoy the little things in life, mm. whether it's Taco Tuesday or a date night or the little things, the little things. Yeah. So that's, I guess that's the conscious effort that I've made. I think in, in my first marriage, I was always just trying to survive. Mm. I was just trying to get by. I was trying to cover things up. I was trying to protect everyone. Mm -hmm. And now I have no problem saying I'm broken right now. In this moment, I'm broken. And it's hard for him to see me cry. But as my therapist said to me one day, I don't do drugs, never have. Mm -hmm. I barely drink. And crying is resetting my nervous system. Mm -hmm. That's how I do it. Yeah, I cry, it's out, and then I'm... I feel and like then I you're can done. move forward. I'm done. Yeah. 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 How is his relationship with the kids? Insanely amazing. Yeah. So Lennox, um, <laughs> Lennox, I mean, they go on date night together, mm. Lennox and Ryan. I mean, I was out of town the other day and they sent me a picture of the two of them um, at Burger Up having dinner. Yeah. She is so close, mm-hmm. um, but she's also with me full time. You have, yeah, she lives with you full time. Full time. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, she 
on his birthday recently, she wrote him a beautiful letter that she insisted he he read aloud mm-hmm. to our his entire birthday crowd um, and and bought gifts along the lines of bonus dad oh. and said, you know, thank you so much for being the dad of my life. Mm. And he, and I, I would say that, you know, they're very solid. He is having a hard time with the teenage years. Like yeah. the other day he said, we were at lunch and he said, do you think that that pro- t- shirt is appropriate to <laughs> wear? <laughs> or, hey, she's seen that little guy that she likes two days in a row. Like, <gasps> I'm not really sure that this yeah. is a... So I'm watching... Now you're like, oh God, she's like, really oh, in deep. No, yeah, she's Lennox in deep. Might, yeah, Lennox <laughs> might be like, okay, we're gonna need to rein this back. Yes, yes. Yeah. So she, he's definitely protective. Hmm over her well i love that uh sally has uh, is actually standing in our wedding love on that. ryan's side and um they play ping pong every night and ryan is able to assert himself in some ways like mm-hmm. sally doesn't respond he doesn't respond to either right. doesn't text he's that kid yeah ryan's now in a position where he can say hey buddy like out of respect like that's- yeah because that that can be like a weird oh yeah. i don't want to yeah. like be and the Sally yeah is too much so responsive especially to teenage oh boys like a man coming in yeah. and they'd be like yeah. you're not telling me what to yeah. do yeah and Sally and Ryan are always picking on me together mm-hmm. it's very fun mm-hmm. actually it's very fun i love it and then jet um he's now not a minor so yes. he doesn't live with us anymore and you know jet jet's gone through a lot of stuff uh, Jet adores Ryan. Mm. Um, I think he still feels like he's in a place where he wants to protect his parents. Sure. Um, but couldn't be happier, will obviously be at the wedding, and couldn't be happier that he's in my life. Mm. And uh, they golf together, and they do things outside of our family unit. Love it. And I love it. And we didn't even really say, we kind of jumped ahead, that you are getting married. Yeah, we're getting married. When uh, wait, this, wait, he proposed last spring. Last spring, last spring in um, Banff, a, like a year, like on our anniversary, almost on our anniversary in Whistler. One year after you met, met, okay, on yes. the mountain. Yeah. When you, I mean, I, this is kind of a. I, I already know the answer, uh, but I'll ask you anyways. When you posted your photo of you guys getting engaged, what was the response like? to that of you moving so on so warm and so loving good um i don't recall seeing negative responses mm. to that there were also a lot so i didn't read everything sure. i would say that from the time that i met ryan or even before that from the time that i announced the divorce to the time that i met ryan things have changed for me on social media and i think people when they have like a whole scope of work to see Mm -hmm. on social media. And I say scope of work because some things are planned, right? Some things don't represent the full picture, but there was consistency. Mm. And I think people realized that I was trying to move on and trying to be a good parent and trying. And you're happy. And I'm happy. And they were happy for me. So that was really cool. Yeah. What would you say to the woman who is, we've used these examples throughout, sitting at home right now and either not happy in her situation, but thinking there's really no way out. I don't know how I would ever make this work, the kids, or to, and then also to the woman who is going through this right now and just thinks, like you said, running in place. She's just feels stuck. What's your advice to further the steps? I'm not a therapist, but I will say that I exhausted every option that I had. And that was important to me to do. Mm -hmm. And I didn't exhaust it going, well, I got to check a box here and I got to check a box here. I wanted my marriage to work. But by exhausting all of the options that I could do to make it work, made it easier for me to then, you know, justify divorce. I will say that the year post-divorce, somebody told me is going to be harder than the divorce itself. They Mm -hmm. were not wrong. Really? It was harder the year post divorce was harder. So just you coming to, to terms with it? Coming, no, I think custody, especially if you have kids, mm-hmm. is hard to navigate. Um, you're living two different lives now, and you're going to go in one direction or the other. And you Finding hope it that who you're you gonna, are. Yes. Um, but there's so much life out there. So, to the person who's listening to this, I have been as low as a person can be. Mm-hmm. There have been moments you where have. I just thought, I don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, if this is life, then yeah. 
And I think social media, because, and you do, you're very open and you do share a lot of hard things, but social media for the most part part is a highlight reel and and it's the happiness Uh and and you share a lot of happiness. And I think there are a lot of people who look at your life and think, what does she have to complain about? She has everything. I would also say that I share a lot of happiness to like exude joy and put that out into the world. I would share a lot more of my story if I didn't think there were people that would be hurt Mm -hmm. by it. And you, we've talked about this. I would love, I'm starting a podcast. I would love to be able to talk about every detail, very transparently, you know, transparently. But some people will get hurt in that process. Mm-hmm. So you have to decide if it is it worth yeah. it. And I give you major credit for doing that because I see tons of people on social media all the time who are yeah. bashing their exes and, yeah. and just putting it out there. And you have really done a great job of, of keeping your, your well, head high. Thank you. And it's not that that's a choice that everybody has to make. And I will say that it, people who make it the other way, sometimes that's their way of yeah. coping. exploring and yeah, yeah, yeah. And coping um, and expressing themselves. <clears throat> so it's all about choices. But for the person that's running in place, I mean, a racehorse must run. You have to eventually. Yeah. Or you don't. I mean, it's a choice. You get to decide that. And <laughs> or, you are you, or you don't. <laughs> but I've had to make the decision to wake up every morning, whether I'm depressed and it's not always been easy. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that it's easy for anybody else. And I'm also not suggesting that somebody else's depression w- was mine. Right. I'm built differently. Yeah. And, and we all are. But, oh my gosh, there's so many cool things there's out there. There's a lot there. of life out there. There's so waste. much life yeah. out there. Mm-hmm. And so the, I, I've met with, with, I just met with somebody recently who's a, who's going through a divorce. And I could see in her eyes, I've been in her place. Yeah. And I was like, you know, this is out there for you too. Yeah. yeah. But you got to go get it. Yeah. You do. It does not come to you. Match.com does not come knocking no, on your door. No, it does not. You, you've Say, got hey. to make the profile fake or not. <laughs> fake or Start not. Start with a fake one. No commitments. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Okay. Last question for you. I going to say five, 10 years from now. Yeah. Perfect scenario. What, what are you doing? What's happening in, in Courtney's life? I'm probably feeding babies in Ethiopia. Mm. I'm living somewhere else. I have recently realized that my calling is and what fills me as well. So it's Mm self-serving as well uh, is to give and Mm. to help those that just literally can't help themselves. And I mean, that's why I think when you go out there and I just recently took my kids on a trip to Ethiopia and to Kenya, but my eyes were opened in a way. And I have always felt called to Africa and Mm -hmm. I've never been. I actually wanted to raise our kids there for a couple of years and life just had different plans. But sitting here just talking about how do we make the choice to move forward when we have all of this Mm -hmm. at our fingertips. Yeah. We're not worried about eating. No. Um, Being around people who are struggling to find food for their families who also are so joyous and so happy. And I want to, be around that. And I want to, I want to go and serve. Uh-huh. And that's honestly probably my lifelong goal is to put myself in a position at some point in my life where I can do that. I love that. Yeah. Well, I so and take appreciate everyone's you. money yes, to do it. That's perfect. <laughs> and then just n- nice to go fund me to go yes. do that. Yes. <laughs> well, if there's anyone that can do it, it is you. So well, you want to come to Africa, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. I'm a little worried about all those shots, but Don't I, worry about I could do it. Um, well, I thank you so much for being here. And I hope that there are women who listen today who either found this therapeutic or inspirational or just really enjoyed getting kind of to the heart of your story. But I adore you and I am so happy for you and Ryan and your upcoming marriage and everything you've got going on. I appreciate you being here. I adore you too, girl. Thanks. Love you. Thanks. Love you.